Check test. <clears throat> hello. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody this evening? Looks like we got good audio. I'll hang here for just a second, make sure everything's Check test. Yeah, look sounding good. All right. So yeah, so good to see you all tonight. Tuesday night, seven o'clock. Snow here. We've had probably three inches in the last couple days. We probably got an inch today, yeah, something like that. So, looking a little pale tonight, aren't I? I wonder what the deal is. Let's see. This helps. Uh, a little better. So, let's go over and check the chat, see who all's here. Been chatting with uh, Vincent RV Life and Gary in the pre chat. Gary sounds like he picked up a couple of those uh, larger 9-watt fixtures that I uh, showed in uh, this last Sunday's video when I started the uh, electrical design. Thanks for your support, Gary. I do greatly appreciate that. Oh, uh, yeah, Vincent uh, down there reporting uh, uh, storms in Florida. Tim Myers checking in. Hi, Tim. Gary D. has been having some trouble. We've been chatting a little bit offline on his EcoFlow unit. It sounds like they're finding, finally sending him a new one. It broke. He returned it. They fixed it. Returned it. It was still broke. Fox Brap. <laughs> That's Ian. Uh, Ian changed his name. So good to see you, Ian. <laughs> I love that handle, Fox Brap. Uh, okay, cool. Gary says he'll post a YouTube video. By the way, Gary, uh, email me uh, your channel handle, channel name, uh, and I'll uh, share that with this with the folks on the chat tonight. Eric Myers checking in. Good to hear from you, Eric. Scott Mogich. Hey, Scott. Haven't heard from you for a while. It's good to see you out there in Lindsay, Ontario, Canada. Uh, how's your weather? Looks like there's a huge storm coming your way. Well, it was here over the weekend. Uh, a friend of mine up in the Haley Sun Valley area got 27 inches. <laughs> we were 100 and maybe 10, 15 miles away from there, and we got Jack over the weekend. So... Uh, Ian, or excuse me, Vincent RV Life, that's Bruce, he got himself a new rig um, and so shared some photos with me and I'm going to share those with you, except I didn't add a microphone to this scene. I'll see if I can do that while it is running. Okay, we should have a microphone now. Great. Looks nice. Very nice. Uh, I forget, did you tell me what year this was? Uh, I'll have to go check your email. Yeah, 2017 Thor, Four Winds is what we're looking at here. And uh, <laughs> he says the unit has three TVs. Uh, three TVs. That is funny. Um, but it's cool. Nice looking rig. Um, it's got the residential fridge. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, so <clears throat> nice ride there. Uh Bruce or slash Vincent RV Life. Well done. Like it. Uh, let's see. Uh, two Feathers checking in. Uh, did you make it to uh, Quartzsite yet? Uh, two? That is uh, Vincent RV Life's new motorhome, Tim. Scott Mogich says 21 degrees and 3 to 4 inches of snow on the ground. That's about what we have here. It's currently trying to snow. It's more spittling than anything. 
But yeah, um, <clears throat> and we're probably in the 20s here. I don't know. I'll check the official weather station. No, we're at 26. <laughs> it's a heat wave. So yeah, if you have any questions, be sure and throw them over in the chat window. Uh, and if you're shy about that, you can email me at trbolin at gmail.com. That's T-R-B-O-W-L-I-N at gmail.com. And two, two says they did make it to Quartzsite. Great. How did the motorcycle make the trip? Question mark. We've been chatting about two taking her son's motorcycle uh, to uh, with her. He's traveling. My beard's a mess. Uh, he's traveling with her uh, this winter, so that's great. Tom's in. Yeah, I like their colors, too. Um, it, it, it's a beautiful rig. I'm going to go back and uh, let's see here. Nice full uh, length slide, too. That's a really nice feature there. Uh, I don't know if I can st stop that. Let me go back to that. See if I can go to that floor plan. Are you seeing that bigger, folks? I hope so. I'm watching here to see if you guys get to see what I just did. But anyway, yeah, great. I blew up the floor planning a little bit for us here. Cab over bunk, jackknife sofa, dream dinette sleeper, and a queen bed. Wow, that thing would sleep six, eight maybe. If you're real cozy, you could get eight in there, but six for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's a nice uh, that's a nice uh, rig you got there. Uh, yeah, Fox Brap says it's going to be in the mid 30s in Tucson tonight. Yeah, it's that time of the year down there. Um, I saw where about a week and a half ago, uh, you guys were down into the teens, at least uh, over on the uh, west side of town, out off of Ajo Highway. <clears throat> I still. Uh, I found a weather station that uh, was close to my RV park in Tucson, and so uh, I bookmarked it, and uh, I check it every once in a while just to see. I'm <laughs> hating winter. <laughs> I'm ready to get out of here for, well, that ain't going to happen this year. I just have to suck it up and live through the cold and the snow. But yeah, if you have any questions, be sure and throw them over there into the uh, chat window. Otherwise, uh, we'll just sit here and chat for a few minutes. Um, <clears throat> let me do this real quick. I, I might have had... Yeah, let me just look at my notes from last week. I did change my pad finally. You can see this one was getting really dirty. Coffee spilled on it. Okay, so I don't really see anything here that I thought. Uh, oh, there was something I did want to mention. I'll throw that over there because I think I'm probably done with it. Is that <clears throat> I was considering doing solar on my home. And so I was doing some research on uh, solar panels. And um, I discovered a company in Salt Lake that is recycling solar panels. So what's happening is is that some of these older solar farms that had smaller panels, less uh, efficient panels than are available today. <coughs> um, so they're they're not bad. They're taking them out of service and replacing them with the uh, higher efficiency, higher capacity panels which sort of makes sense and if you're looking at it in a large scale. But they had some 335-watt panels for really inexpensive, for like $0.44 cents a, a watt. <clears throat> and usually you kind of figure around a dollar a watt on solar panels. Uh, maybe a little less than that now that the efficiencies have come up a little. But I found that pretty uh, interesting that they're now uh, recycling solar panels out of large solar farms and reselling them. Back over here to the chat, catching up there. Uh, two said they had to leave the toys home. Uh, that's a bummer. Freeze warning for quartzite. Yeah, there's a real cold cell coming in, apparently. 
Uh, they're saying that it's supposed to be really cold up here and stick around for a while. Two, sorry, two says she got sunburned the other day. That's funny. That's because you're up there in the cold and the snow and the rain all for the last three months. You finally get a little sun on your skin and you burn like everybody, <laughs> like me. Eric agrees it's cold. Tom Downey says they've been in the 40s uh, and high 30s all week. Yeah. G Gary says he loves his 12-volt chair heater, uses it for grid tie. Uh, that's pretty cool. What? Wait, wait a minute. Uh, love my 12 volt chair heater. Did we have a, do we have a failure to communicate here because of voice recognition? 12 volt chair heater. Okay. Did I miss something in the chat? I'm going to run back here and just check through the chat real quick. Oh, thanks Tim for the compliment on Sunday's video. Yeah. The part two is uh, a lot more of the same. Uh, me just showing the process I go through to figure things out like that. By the way, Tim, I'm still working on that spreadsheet you shared with me. Um, I copied a, I made a copy of it local here so I could play with it, and uh, I might, uh, I might uh, share that with you maybe next week. Uh, just as a reminder, from an accounting sense, uh, we'll be here next week and then be off for two weeks until after the first of the year. I believe that'll make our first broadcast on the 3rd of 2023. So I'll be here next week, then off for two weeks, and then back on February 3rd in the new year. But yeah, um, you know, uh, still uh, chunking along on, I've got a couple of items that I've been working on. Cashmere, hi Tom, Tom, but I says Cashmere, Washington to 32 inches Friday night. Yeah, I saw that there were some huge amounts uh, up there and in uh, Sierra Nevadas, you know, they were reporting three to four feet in places. Uh, now, all of those areas really need it, at least down in the southern, you know, down in the Sierra Nevadas and stuff like that. So hopefully they'll have a good water year. Um, yeah, fingers crossed for those folks. Uh, another really interesting thing that happened today, uh, I guess it actually happened a while back, but they just uh, talked about it today, was the first positive energy fusion reaction. Uh, now we're still probably 10, 15 years from making commercial power that way. But gosh, you know, if they could get to fusion and, and making commercial power with it, um, you know that that changes everything uh, um, yeah that changes everything of course I got to think that the technology is going to be really expensive for that um, Sabine Hossfelter has a really interesting article uh, video on YouTube here uh, about uh, fusion that is uh, worth watching if you're interested Sabine Hossfelter I'll uh, I'll go pop her channel here real quick and share it with you. She don't know me. I don't know her. This isn't sponsored. Uh, but I just think that she has some good content. And uh, she really kind of takes the the nonsense out of, uh, of science. So hang on a second here. I'm just getting a link to her channel for you. That uh, It's definitely worth... Uh, it's definitely worth uh, checking out if you're interested in that kind of stuff. There you go. Yeah, she's really interesting, and uh, she's she calls uh, bull on stuff when it needs to be called, for sure. So, yeah, uh, great channel there. Uh, Roundtown Scouter checking in. Hi. Uh, good to see you. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Everybody looking forward to Christmas, question mark? Um, and then I have another question for you. Uh, I know that a lot of you folks, um, you know, you might you might be watching my project videos, you know, my truck camper videos, 
And so now I'm starting to think about my next project. And um, so I'm open to some, to some suggestions uh, as to whether you'd like me to do maybe another truck camper or maybe some kind of a towable. I don't have room to tackle a fifth wheel, but I do have room to tackle a small towable. And so uh, I've been thinking about maybe doing a re re rehab, refurbish, hopefully not a restore like I've had to do with the truck camper, but I'm not opposed to that. On some kind of a travel trailer. I've actually been looking at uh, Airstreams. I kind of like those. Uh, that might be fun to do an older small Airstream, uh, restore it, uh, or maybe something else. But I'd be interested to know what might be of interest to you. If you want to drop a comment in the chat and let me know, uh, we'll do. A, I'll take a kind of a quick informal survey while we shout out to Jeff and say, "Hey, balmy 18 in Denver. Yeah, the storm you you have right now is the storm we had the last couple days." And by the way, uh, there's more on the way. <laughs> uh, I saw that uh, 76 is closed. Uh, pretty much all of northeast De uh, Colorado was closed. All of Nebraska. Is N N N Nebraska. N Nebraska. That's a new state. Somewhere between Nebraska and Nevada. Nebraska is pretty much completely closed. That's, I saw that on the news tonight. So yeah, thanks for checking in, Jeff. It was good to hear from you. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I like I say, where there's if there's not any real RV type questions, then uh, we'll sit here and chat for a few more minutes. And if we don't get any more in, uh, then I'll wrap this up a little early tonight. We'll, so we'll go another 12 minutes or so and see. Um, but yeah, if you have uh, any ideas on uh, projects that you maybe would like to see me tackle next on the channel, uh, I'd be most interested to hear. Uh, your thoughts on that. Tom Downey says a small tellable 12 to 16 built from scratch. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I've actually seen a couple of guys do that. I saw a guy do a teardrop. Um, uh, you know, one of the teardrop type uh, as a towable small one. That might be really fun. Oh, I saw Carl check in, but I didn't see, uh, I must have skipped it. I thought I saw Carl check in from somewhere in South Carolina. Hi, Carl. Gosh, it's nice to see you. It's, Carl's been a, a viewer of the channel for years now. And so it's guys like Carl's that, that I really appreciate. Yeah, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Good to, good to see you, Carl. Keep that snow out west. Yeah, you can, you'll, you can get a little snow now and then. You gotta keep you humble. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, two feathers. I looked into renting a, a new horse trailer at one point. The cost was prohibitive. Um, uh, Laura Kampf uh, did a horse trailer renovation. In fact, she's done a number. I, I love her channel. Uh, She's done a number of uh, like towable type vehicle renovations, Laura Kampf. Um, so yeah, and she's been doing a house rehab. In, she's in Germany, by the way, Cologne, Germany, I believe is where she is. Uh, but <clears throat> yeah, uh, she's, she did a horse trailer, but it was a used horse trailer. Uh, and she does a lot of repurposing, which is something that I have a lot of interest in. You know, uh, unfortunately, you know, 12 years ago when I sold my last house, I got rid of all my stuff. Um, you know, can't look back and, and cry. That's not the way I run anyway. But that being said, something a Toyota Tacoma can haul. <clears throat> yeah, too. Uh, that is a good idea. Um, you know, maybe I'll sell the pickup in the truck camper and I'll get a Toyota Tacoma. Um, I had a Toyota, well, the equivalent of a Tacoma <clears throat> back in the 90s. I had the Toyota pickup. It was before the Tundra and the Tacoma, you know, before they had to differentiate them. 
uh, with the SR5 that had the extra cab, um, and I had a I had a shell on it. I camped out of the back of it quite a bit, uh, particularly when I was doing my master's degree. I was doing work about well 60 miles from the nearest town. And it was 35 miles of dirt road, so it was a two and a half to three hour drive back and forth every night. And so I just ended up camping in the Toyota pickup. Uh, I had it all set up, built a bed in it, so on and so forth. Uh, cargo trailer, yeah, that's a thought too, Vincent. And a fold out, no way, Tom. Um, I, I thought I thought about that. I did. I think I thought about it a lot. Um, and I thought about doing like a pop-up. I saw a guy, oh, I guess it's probably somewhere in the last year or so, that had built a pop-up that had, the, you know, that he had, um, uh, you know, had the, I don't know, I guess it was nylon or something like that, uh, walls, and it would, you know, the top would pop up like a typical pop-up. And I thought about that. There is a... Um, there is a company in Idaho Falls that will can do anything custom in canvas, nylon, any of that kind of stuff. Um, and so uh, I would be able to get, uh, you know, the pop-up piece done, the canvas piece done. I don't know what you call it, the soft wall. Uh, and by the way, I do have a sewing machine myself. Uh, you'll get to see that soon in a future video as I fight with tarps and fight with tarps and fight with tarps. I think that video will be out in probably two or three weeks. Uh, it's a compilation of the whole project basically up to where I am right now with it sitting out here uh, uh, in its winter hibernation slumber waiting for me to get back to work on it. Work on it. <laughs> Carl Jones says, the difference is here. I didn't just snow cripples you for a week. I know I was in Atlanta. This has been a long time ago, probably maybe 99. And I was uh, there for work and I was staying at a hotel. that was probably maybe three miles, maybe three miles from our office. And we would always take the interstate because it was just faster than the surface streets. <clears throat> but they had an ice storm, and that town shut down. I was surprised. Um, I had a all-wheel drive Ford uh, something or other. I don't remember what it was. It was a Ford all-wheel drive. What do they call those? Exploders, I guess it was. Explorer. And uh, it didn't bother me at all. I just got on the road and went down to the office and got there and realized it was closed because of an ice storm. <laughs> and I'm like, that's not a storm. You guys don't know from storms. But when you got 6 million people trying to drive 85 billion miles an hour like they do through Atlanta on icy roads, yeah, it's probably a good idea to shut down. Uh, let's see. Um... Hey, Scott W. is checking in. Scott, keep in mind, if you want to get rid of your rig, I'd be happy to take a look at that. Uh, Scott has a 2000-ish 2000, 2000 uh, S&S, but he has the Phylon uh, walls. Uh, and the Phylon, remember, is just a contraction of fiberglass and Luon. <clears throat> and it's just a method of laminating fiberglass to a panel of Luon plywood. That's why they call it Phylon. And then that becomes the surface of the RV. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Bruce's, Vincent's, uh, Vincent RV Life's rig, that's a Phylon wall there. Let me get back out to the, one of the exterior pictures like that one. Let's pause that. So those walls are Phylon. So that's going to be fiberglass over Luon, and it's really good construction. Um, and the Phylon can be removed. It's tricky. And it, the, the nice thing about the Phylon over the uh, metal is it can be repaired, uh, just like normal fiberglass. So uh, that's a plus to the Phylon. 
And actually, I've considered, and I probably won't, but I considered and actually did the calculations to uh, do Phylon as a replacement uh, for the steel, for the uh, metal on my truck camper. And what I'm doing here is looking through my book. Uh, you've probably heard me say this before, but I do diaries. And I have a diary for just about everything. You know, I've got uh, this. This is a classic right here. Oops. <laughs> my RV logbook. I don't know, can you read that? Uh, but that was for my Class A. So everything, all the maintenance and everything I ever did to it was in there. I had that out the other day looking something up. But I'm thinking I figured that out. And I thought it was going to be about... A thirteen hundred dollars to do the phylon to replace the walls that I have now with phylon I just got to find my notes yeah here it is yes yeah, thirteen hundred and sixty dollars and that included all the material and the adhesive you have to use a special adhesive with the phylon when you group when you glue it down fold out small 777 boeing trailer <laughs> why not if you'll buy the fuel gary i'll 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 uh, turn it into an rv how about that <laughs> i kind of like it canvas smells great Agree, two feathers. I was using canvas as an example. I can't think of what they call that nylon uh, material. I guess it's just nylon material. Um, but it, I would, you know, do it out of that nylon tent-like material. I need to move my cable here. Hopefully, I don't knock myself off. I've got, I've got it in the worst possible spot tonight. All right. Jeff says, uh, oh, actually there in South Denver, the blizzard missed us. They missed them. It hit the northeast Colorado and Nebraska hard. Yeah. It must not have dropped far enough south. I don't know. When I lived in Denver, we had a couple of really good snowstorms. I remember one time being downtown Denver, and there was a good 16 inches of snow on the ground down there. Tom Downey says, do a foldable boat to fish with. Now, that's a good idea. I like that. <clears throat> Build it so that it fits in a long Thule box, right? That would be great. Canoe? Yeah. Uh, Kevin Coop says, he saw somebody that took a travel trailer and converted it to a pontoon boat. That's interesting. It could be done. All you'd have to do is seal it up, lift up the door a little bit. Interesting, though. So, uh, Fox, perhaps check the email. Okay, well, Tom Downey, I do those repairs. They are invisible when done right. Exactly. Uh, so where do you get new panels? Well, um, you can get new panels from RecPro. Uh, they sell Phylon uh, by the roll. Uh, you can order lengths that you want. Um, there's a link in the description of this video to RecPro. And there's also a discount code that will get you a discount at RecPro. RecPro. I'll get it out. Uh, RecPro. Um, and you can get the Phylon, the fiberglass, from RecPro. Uh, laminating the panels is not difficult. Okay. So that's where you, uh, and I think you could probably buy pre-laminated panels, uh, but it's going to be hella expensive because of shipping, right? They can ship the fiberglass rolled, and I think it's a maximum of like eight feet or something like that, if memory serves me correctly. I don't know. Let's just go look real quick. We've got the time since I really don't have anything prepared tonight. Let me pop this over here real quick. And uh, let's see. Here we go. Oh, I forgot to switch. Sorry, just a moment, folks. 
let me do a little bit of reorganizing here and then I think this will get us there yeah and so this is rec pro okay REC PRO and uh, you can get you know several colors Looks like they have three right now. Um, and you can see it's fairly expensive. In fact, the price has gone up a bit, if memory serves me correctly. But as you can see, you can buy whatever you want. And so I figured I needed eight foot wide by uh, actually almost 16 long. But let's just go 15. So it would have been, yeah, the price has gone up a little bit, it looks like. So to do one side of my rig... Uh, would have been four hundred and thirty four dollars and you double that then you got to do the front and the back so you know let's just say that you need uh, 30 feet of it which I think is an underestimate let's go 35 so then you're into it for 874 and then you have to have the adhesive which is another couple hundred bucks so yeah I don't know I mean um, but that's where you that's one place you can get it. You might be able to find a place that, you know, will do laminated panels. They'll sell you laminated panels. But again, I gotta think they're gonna be hella expensive. Sorry, I gotta get reorganized here, get the screens reorganized. And I thought I heard something pop in. Let me just check real quick here and see. Oh, yeah, awesome. Let me just pop this up and sh I don't have this. Let's see. We'll just do this real quick. Um, you might remember that uh, several, I don't know, months ago, I guess it was, Ian, uh, they got a brand new rig and uh, his uh, better half wanted a washer dryer. And uh, I think I might actually, I don't know if that'll still play. Oh, yeah. So look at that. I still have it. So here's Ian's breaker panel that he had, and he was asking some advice on how to, to install that properly. And uh, so, yeah, we had a, a great discussion, and I had completely forgot about split breakers. And so Ian went ahead and it looks like he got it all installed. He did send a picture here. Let me run back over here. And there you go. That's his install. Let me see if I can pop this up a little bit for you. So that looks like a nice unit. Are those Samsung? It looks like they are. Yeah, those are some Samsung. So nicely done. Everything worked out okay, uh, Ian? Sorry, Fox Brap. And, uh, oh, uh, two sent me a photo here. <laughs> all right that's not exactly what i had in mind when i thought of uh of uh <laughs> 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 i was thinking pontoon boat but why not <laughs> that's hilarious looks like it might be sitting on barrels let's see oh no it looks like they might actually be some kind of a pontoon. Well, that's that's it. That's funny. That's some funny stuff there. Thanks too. Well, that's pretty funny. All right, I don't have any other email in there, so we'll come back over here and get reorganized. Uh, let's see. I need to get this over here, and we'll go back and check the uh, chat window. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks, Roundtown Scouter. Yeah, uh, Ripstop is another na uh, uh, name they call that. Well, Scott, you know, um, I see you say you wish you could not have the front windows. There would be no reason why you couldn't fill those in with plywood and put a piece of the luon on, on the outside or just the plywood and then buy just enough of that laminate to just relaminate the front. You'd only need maybe 6, 8, 10 feet. And so you might only be looking at, you know, 70, 80, 100 bucks. Well, actually, no, let's see it. 
eight and a half foot wide is going to get you the what width. And if you figure coming from the top and coming around one, two, three, four, you could probably get by with four or five feet and actually patch that and make it look like it never had a window and actually use fiberglass to patch it. I think that wouldn't be terribly difficult. Sounds like uh, you probably have a skill set that would be able to handle that. Yeah, Tom Downey says uh, uh, they buy those uh, panels from Seattle. I imagine he meant Marine Supply in any color. And then Kevin Coop says, yeah, AZ Expert has videos of installing it on Winnebago roofs. Yes, he does. He also has um, a really good video on removing the fiberglass from the side of a Winnebago and relaminating it after fixing a wall. Uh, so AZ Experts, another, uh, you know, he's a guy, he's a real uh, RV technician in Arizona down there in the Phoenix area. And so he does, a, seems like he gets involved with a lot of roofs, a lot of really major reconstruction type stuff is what he gets involved in. And uh, definitely worth checking him out, AZ Expert on YouTube. Uh, Tim Meyer says, would Phylon make sense on your roof? Yes, Tim, uh, I think it would, uh, but actually I don't know if I would do a Phylon proper. I think what I would do is I would uh, put down uh, my substrate because uh, Phylon and fiberglass, Luon plywood's typically only four or five millimeters, which is about a quarter of an inch. That's not going to be enough structure. So I think you'd probably want to go up to maybe half inch plywood lay that down, and then just laminate the fiberglass to that plywood. But that would be really expensive. Um, I mean, if you're going to keep your uh, RV for a really long time, it would probably be just fine. Uh, but uh, I'm going to run back over here real quick because I don't think I closed that window. And because I like the idea, and actually I didn't even think about that when I replaced my roof. But I got my roof from Rec Pro. Let me go back over here because they had roofing right here on the front. And so there's 10% of the cost. Uh, let's just say you need 8.5 foot. And let's just go 40. Come on calculate the tools like that are stupid guess they don't come in 40 foot lengths and maybe this website just isn't updating but yeah and they sell the kits but yeah I got mine uh, I didn't go with PVC though um, for sure but yeah, it's 10 times the cost, it looks like, for the least expensive PVC roofing. Uh, I went with uh, EDPM, which I think is probably this one here. Uh, you'd, we'd have to go and look. Well, that's PVC too. Uh, well, they used to have EDPM. Um, and I don't. we don't need to sit here and spend all night uh, looking at that crap. Uh, just... Curious though, yeah, but you could use definitely uh, fiberglass in place of uh, uh, rubber roofing on any roof as long as you had the structure there. You know, you'd want at least a half inch plywood, I would think. Scott W says, Yeah, shipping would suck, but it would be nice to update the camper. Yeah, for sure. Huh, interesting. Tom says there's a guy who lives in a Bardo, uh, Bardi 40 by 85 fully equipped. What's a Bardi? Uh, I don't get it. Fox Brap. Yes, sir. Two Samsungs that work well. Getting the wire f uh, from the underbelly through the access hole above the gray tank was the hardest part. I bet. Into the basement or behind the breaker box. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but you did it. <clears throat> and you have the satisfaction of having done it yourself. And you probably saved yourself a thousand bucks. 
because if you'd have gone to the RV shop, they'd have had it for three or four days. You'd have probably had to take it back twice. And then you'd have been staying in hotels. And <laughs> I don't know. I'm a cynic when it comes to taking equipment to the RV repair shop. Barge. Okay. Gotcha, Tom. Uh, oh, hey, I forgot. It's about half past and then some. And I usually try to do my cheap plug at the half past mark, which is don't forget to like this video. If you do, I'd appreciate that. Give me that thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, ring the notification bell. Tons of videos still to come. Um, still thinking on what to do for a new project for next year. Uh, I'll probably be sometime in early May. If the weather cooperates, uh, by early May I should have the truck camper back together and on my truck and ready to camp in it. I'm hoping. Uh, if everything goes the way I think. But then I'll have time to start a new project. And so I'm still... <clears throat> looking around for that. A small towable sounds really desirable. Uh, go over to my website, trbolin.com. Just take a few minutes to look around over there. You can check out some of my photography and stuff. Uh, and then, of course, you can support the channel in other ways by going to the links in the video description to either Amazon, where I'll get a small commission, but you pay the same price, or RecPro and Renogy, uh, where you'll get a discount and uh, I'll get a small commission as well. So thank you so much for supporting the channel. Kevin Coop says, best part, he didn't get zapped. Yeah, I warned him over and over to make sure the power was turned off <laughs> uh, before he got into it. But yeah, good deal. Um, yeah, great deal. But yeah, so... Uh, that's the cheap commercial, and I'm open to any other questions or suggestions on projects for next year. Or for the next project. Uh, let's see, I'm just kind of going back and checking the comments here to make sure I haven't overlooked stuff. The, the scroll in the comment window is really jumpy sometimes. And so I'll be, you know, reading comments, checking out, scroll down, and then I'll, it'll jump, and then I'll miss uh, comments. And I appreciate, you know, I, I apologize for that. Oh, he's just a generator and a lithium system. So a 40 by 85 barge fully equipped. On the water, I'm assuming, Tom. Wondering, RN, how hard is it to install new flooring on slides? It's not hard. Um, you know, um, not hard at all. As long as it's just the slide and you're not repl replacing the floor on the main part. And even that's not hard. I actually have a video on my channel about that. Uh, well, it's sort of a slideshow video. Uh uh, wandering RN. Um, <clears throat> oh, she says her dog peed on the rug. I want to rip it out. Oh, in that particular case, yeah. Uh, you know, strip it out. Get yourself some uh, uh, engineered flooring. Works the best. And uh, it's really easy. It's not difficult at all to uh, change the flooring out in the slide. Not at all. Dog peed on the rug, I want to rip it out. Yeah, that's a drag. <laughs> Being able to spell help. I understand that one, Tom, for sure. Thank goodness for spell checker. Uh, yeah, so any other questions, uh, throw them in there. If you're shy and you don't want to submit your questions in the chat window, uh, you can certainly send me an email at trbolin at gmail.com. Um, let's see. Uh, Eric sent me something here. Hang on a minute. <laughs> uh, okay, so I kind of like the idea. Let's let's think about this for a minute. Hang on just a second here. I gotta get uh, I gotta get things popped over here. Eric Meyer says rebuild this. <laughs> it's almost like a calliope wagon. I think really what it's supposed to be is like a Sooner, right? I mean, you know, like, well, I don't know what the hell it's supposed to be. It's got a washer on it, a scooter, 
about 400 pounds, 600, 700, 800 pounds of iron. It's some kind of a sculpture on wheels, isn't it? Yeah, what that reminds me of would be maybe somebody, a Sooner that was headed to, uh, let's see if we can read the sign here. No, not can't quite read the sign. But that reminds me of like a Sooner, like somebody you would have imagined as a Sooner, somebody escaping the Dust Bowl and heading west for California. <laughs> Rebuild that. But it could be fun. You could put a, you could build a little truck camper for that easily, I would think. Yeah, easily. Oh. <laughs> Eric Myers. Yes, an Oki moving van. Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> exactly. Oh, you're welcome, Scott. Uh, happy to uh, share my knowledge and information uh, around that truck camper. I wouldn't, I'm not opposed to doing another truck camper, to be honest with you. Yeah. A wandering RN. Yeah, you might be right. I had forgotten about that. But yeah, she says she's pretty sure that was in the Sanford and Son chunk yard, scrap yard. <laughs> yeah, actually, Sanford and Son, I think, might be on Prime. I think you can actually watch the old episodes of Sanford and Son. I've caught myself catching up on Barney Miller. Uh, Ian Fox Brap says, "What's a good replacement insulation? Should I I should use above the underbelly? I was itching for two days." Um, well, to be honest with you, you don't really get in there that often, and fiberglass is the least expensive. The best would be to put two inches of foam up there. Okay. Two inches of foam up in the in the bays between <clears throat> you know your uh, understructure uh, foam insulation has you know two inches will get you about an R seven and a half whereas two or three inches of uh, of uh, fiberglass might get you an R five or seven uh, and you could go with more than two inches of the foam. And fortunately, uh, building materials have come down considerably uh, since this summer. At least lumber has. Uh, I haven't checked foam lately. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, my foam sheets were $36 a piece. And I made the mistake of looking the other day. Uh, my 2-inch foam was $36 a sheet and it's down, down to 28 And so, and I think I bought six sheets of that. Something like that. Uh, Tom says he'd love to find a Model A truck. Yeah, they're, they're rare. Yeah, spray foam would work. Uh, that spray foam is really expensive, though. Closed cell spray foam, though, is the most is the highest insulation value. Uh, roughly R8 per inch. <laughs> Poor phone. Oh, and Sanford and Son. Elizabeth, it's the big one. <laughs> and my arthritis is acting up, right? Good old Fred Sanford. <laughs> How do we end up talking about Fred Sanford on an RV channel? Oh, because we were looking at the at the funny or at the funny picture that uh, um, Eric sent. That's hilarious. Yeah, that's just a rolling piece of sculpture. And, you know, I didn't even notice it, but it's got the extra cab, right? It's got my favorite feature on a pickup. And and that's the, uh, you know, the extra cab, you know, right? So that's an interesting rig. What is that truck? Anybody know? I don't, I don't know my old vehicles that well. Can't read the hubcaps, so I don't recognize that. But yeah, the extra cab is cool. Is that some some kind of a coupe coupe? Um, but yeah, anybody recognize what that? Yeah, Tim Myers exactly. Poly isocyanurate uh, spray foam. I looked at very seriously at spray foam for the truck camper. In fact, I was working on the insulation uh, episode um, the other day, and I'll share with you guys on the channel uh, this book. Um, is super valuable because not only do I keep um, 
like, well, you know, I'll start things like a to-do list. Can you, can you see that? <laughs> now, that to-do list is now like 12 pages long because this was like first, first glances. <clears throat> and then, uh, so then I'll do like a work log. And so, you know, that says, oh, I was editing for three hours. But I think what real value there is is that I'll do stuff like this. And so then I'll take stills and start to do uh, parts lists. So here's, you know, stuff that says it needs to be rebuilt over here. Samples and stuff that I find online of the structure. But I picked this up to show you this piece. Let's see. Because I think I need to go back here. Ways here we go. Things like the insulation calculations. So if you look at that, uh, I colored that 3D ISO uh, diagram there just to help me understand what the surfaces were. And then over here on this side, you can see where I started doing calculations. And I calculated foam board. Uh, polyiso, that's closed cell spray foam, and all of that. I calculated every area, how thick I needed to have it. Et cetera, et cetera. And what it came down to was the foam cost was roughly 480 yeah, 489 Plus, plus I still had to buy another piece of insulation board. And uh, if I did the, uh, the sheets, it was 363. And so I ended up going with the sheets. But anyway, that's what I keep these books for. They come in super handy. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat, too. Gosh, I really appreciate that. It's Scrapyard Cha-Ching. That's a 31A came that way. Oh, okay. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Fox Brap, I'd be worried with spray type stuff. If it ever gets a water leak, have to drop it again to fix it. Yeah, that's why I don't want, I wouldn't use spray foam. Uh, I think you're onto something there. I think I would go with like sheets, uh, poly iso sheets. Yeah, you know, uh, foam sheets. Uh, yeah, Scott, that book is gold. Um, well, no, it's actually kind of tan, isn't it? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, yeah, that book has everything that I did every day, what I did. Not in great details, but it tells me. And it's also my book for editing the episodes. And so as I work through my process is that, you know, because I'm working on video that I recorded in August right now. And here it is December. So that video is four months old. Do you think I have a half a chance of remembering what was in all every video? Well, sort of. I mean, you know, because I tend to work on things together like all insulation or all electrical or but then there's stuff that it to to keep things moving so like here's a good example of while I was working on the insulation or the electrical uh, I started the design I got it figured out to what parts I would need so I ordered parts and then I was kind of at a stopping point so then I went and worked on a few minor little things on the frame and then I went and did the bumper so I stripped the bumper down and cleaned it all up. And then in the middle of all the bumper, uh, while I was doing the bumper, the parts came. The bumper was a shitty job, excuse me, a bad job. Um, YouTube's cracking down on cussing. We'll talk about that in a minute. So then I put the bumper aside, went back to the electrical, pulled the wire, got the wire all pulled. And then I went back and finished the bumper. And then I did like the insulation. But I'm doing like two or three of these projects all at the same time. So on any day, I might have... 
uh, some video around electrical, some video around framing, and some video around repairing the bumper. And then I have to go back and assemble all that and make it make sense. And that book is invaluable for that because then I can keep track of what was in what files and so on and so forth. And it makes it easier so you don't have to sit there and go back and forth. But yeah, that book is gold. If I lost it, I would be really upset. I have one, uh, well, I have four or five of them going over here from other projects. I have done that process for a very long time. Uh, because and a lot of people say, well, why don't you just do it in your cell phone and do a spreadsheet and all this and that? Well, guess what? This needs a battery. That don't. That's really what it comes down to. All right. So, any last comments? Hey, we made it through the hour. How about that? One more week to go, and then we're going to take two weeks off. We'll be off Christmas week and New Year's week. Um, not really illegal. Here's the deal. YouTube is changing what they call their advertiser-friendly guidelines. All right? Really what that means is the advertisers don't want their ads running in videos with questionable content. You can understand that, right? You know, um, so... They just released that uh, with swearing. You can get by with very light, minimal amounts, right? Uh, but you can't have it in the first seven seconds of the video. It can't be in the title. There's all these rules that go into being monetized uh, by YouTube. And uh, anyway, so yeah. And yes, Scott, I have a master's in biology, my, ba my bachelor's is in ecology, and that's why I ended up running computers for most of my life. <laughs> Funny thing is, is that my master's degree was in remote sensing. I was working on mapping cheatgrass in arid, rainland, arid rangelands with low-altitude fixed-wing aircraft. Uh, that's basically the title of my thesis. Um, and then... Uh, the, the honest part of it was is that when I got out of school, the only place I could find that would hire me, and I got a really decent job offer, was in Brownsville, Texas. And I don't know if you've ever been to Brownsville, Texas, but when the world needs an enema, that's where the tube goes. And I had no desire to live in Texas, so I just stuck, stuck it out here in Idaho and stayed working in radio. And then uh, when that got big in corporate, I bluffed my way into a computer job with an engineering company and ended up as the IT manager for years. Oh, Tom Downey. Hey, you know, Tom, I've been watching a lot of forging. I guess it probably stems from watching a little bit of Forged in Fire. Uh, and I also watch uh, Daresta. He does some forging. Uh, I watch uh, a couple other channels that, uh, you know, deal with metal, MMB, LLC. Uh, there's a couple others that I catch every once in a while that do forging and, and that kind of stuff. And, yeah, I have an interest in that. I just have no space for it. I mean, you folks have follow my channel and watch any of my uh, truck camper videos. You've seen that my garage is... Yes, Gary, the seven words are still an issue unless, uh, well, it goes back to, uh, I remember the movie Private Parts uh, and when Howard Stern went to WNBC, WNBC, uh, pig vomit, that was Kenny, the program director, took him aside and he can't say these words. And so what's the first thing they do is they put together a skit to where you can say the, crock cro the cock crowed at midnight and stuff like that, right? We, I won't get into that, but that's a great old, uh, that's a great old uh, skit uh, from George Carlin, uh, one of my uh, comedy icons. In fact, okay, uh, I've got a Carlin story. Uh, in probably 1990-ish, 91, 92, somewhere in there, the radio stations I worked for, we did a, a KMGI Presents George Carlin at the Civic Auditorium, and I got to, to go pick him up at the airport and drive him over to the auditorium for his show, and then 
uh, take him to his hotel at night, that night. And he was an amazing, wonderful, funny ass guy. Um, we, we chatted, we laughed all the way from the airport to the venue. And yeah, he was just the, the kindest, nicest guy you'd ever want to meet. But yeah, the seven words are still an issue. Tim says he always called Wichita. He meant Wichita Falls, the armpit of the South. Well, it sort of is. Uh, but anyway, I don't, I, Texas is a great state. I mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with Texas. There's just certain parts of it. It's like certain parts of Idaho, certain parts of Ohio, certain parts of Washington, certain parts of Florida that you just don't want to live. Okay, well, it's 8 o'clock, and I think we're going to call this one good. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I sure do appreciate it. It's so nice to hear from everybody. Uh, Two Feathers, thank you so much for the super chat. That's very kind of you. And I think we'll call it good. So uh, we'll see you next week at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Until then, peace. Good night. I'll leave you with this. <laughs>